Hello, and welcome to another Knife Nuts Extra. We're back. We are back. Dave, hello. Hey. <laughs> uh, we do have a lot to talk about this week. We do. Should we mention first that uh, you can watch the most recent full episode of the Knife Nuts podcast in video on this YouTube channel, which is new for us. With Brian in his full pissed off glory and Jake being, <laughs> at least later in the episode, full he went full Jake. Yes, which is... The after, camera after... did something <laughs> wacky to Jake. <laughs> Not had enough Jake lately, uh, and and it was just the perfect the perfect amount of Jake that I wanted. Just mm. Jake being Jake. Also, for some extra greatness, if you're a patron, definitely check out the bonus content for uh, that episode um, because we play a game, and the game continues and will be um, will culminate in the next bonus content for the next episode full episode yes. of Knife Nuts Podcast. So just to clue you in, what we did on the on the bonus stuff is um, each of us was given $25 um, and we were, well, I guess I tasked everyone with uh, uh, four key words to go shop on Jake's favorite um, stuff from China website, Thepon. Um, and uh Basically, uh, you could you had twenty five dollars to spend on whatever met these four keywords, and uh, hilarity ensued. Uh, you got bonus points. You get bonus points for uh, having it be knife related um, and all sorts of crazy stuff. But uh, go see what happens. Um, I think the conclusion will be uh, fairly memorable. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I am very excited for this. I think this is worthy of of being its own sort of video content outside of the podcast but it is uh exclusive to patreon subscribers for now it is yeah we're testing the waters you know see what's cool and what's not uh speaking <laughs> of test- Peapon is just fun it's it just is so, so full of junk that i actually they, i found myself buying something from it recently outside of this little game it is it is sadly useful uh maybe we'll get a sponsorship one day uh <laughs> uh speaking of uh side side projects uh all of uh, the Real Steel rockets uh, from Batch 1 have been shipped out. Uh, except yours, Dave, because I'm waiting for another knife for you. I'll survive. Um, It'll be my third one. So, <laughs> Of course, it wouldn't be like a new project without some crazy shipping delays. So I'm still waiting on the first batch of Crystal Knives. Uh, they were uh, shipped out uh, via EMS um, from Russia. Uh, on their end, it all, everything arrived at JFK. But I don't know if there's a delay in the warehouse or something like that because they have not been scanned in to the United States or the U.S. Postal Service yet. So Oh, so they um, haven't even gone through customs yet. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what's happening. Wow. I had thought that they did based around the, the Russian tracking, but... Uh, I'm guessing this process is slower when it's uh, a bunch of knives versus one knife because I've had pretty good experiences with customs not taking long lately. Yeah, well, I talked to customs on the phone. I said it's not un... Uh, Wow, you, know, you actually got you actually yeah, got someone they, on the phone they, from they customs. Answered, they answered right away. They were really helpful. That they is even gave, they even gave me the number to talk to Express USPS Express and said they never answered their phone, so leave them leave a message. Mailbox was full. Yeah. Um, but uh, they said it's not uncommon for things like that, and and honestly, it probably won't even pass through customs if it's just one box. They'll probably just send it right over to USPS once it's done. Um. And uh, then I talked to USPS, who was like, oh, this is international. Let me send you over to U- to Express. They couldn't tell me much. They said basically the same thing. It's like, I think it's just a delay. We, you know, it all depends on what plane it comes in and where it was in the list. So it's not uncommon for you to receive packages um, that were sent out later. Uh, early. Yeah, it's I don't just, think it's time it's to worry. Just... No, no. But, you know, me, it's, it's something <laughs> new for me. So I just want to make everybody happy. Yeah, well, as long as they get mailed to the right people. <laughs> Don't make yeah, my mistake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that was true. I, I love that. It was like you you, you sold your first two knives and yeah. immediately sent them to the wrong people. Yep. Brian was talking about this with, you know, when you're selling hundreds of knives, and we talk about this on the, the most recent episode of the podcast, that he's always worried about shipping it to the wrong people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time I ever sold knives uh, on Blade Floor Blade Florums, Blade, <laughs> Blade Forums, wow, that's a new one. Uh, in like 2011, I 
sold like maybe three knives and two of them went to the wrong people so mm. i have a bad history with this <laughs> you know that, that's okay though you live and you learn yeah that's why i'm not uh, a knife dealer especially yeah. not a baby knife dealer <laughs> it's um small time <laughs> knife dealer yes we found a new phrase yeah it was uh, yeah because it was originally baby dealer which is <laughs> that'll get you flagged Flag. somewhere on paypal yeah. or youtube or anywhere so anywhere right and <laughs> right remo- and rightfully so let's remove that phrase from our vocabulary indeed no um but yeah everything's been going good i have some interesting stuff in the works um everything else has been shipped and hopefully every- it all arrives to me pretty soon yeah, well, I mean that's this is honestly better than I expected coming from Russia. When we got, I mean, when we had those real steals from Germany that took three months, I kind of assumed Russia would be even worse. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that was uh, that was at the height of the the shipping. Yeah, craziness that's true. Too. So yeah. I don't know. They said I, even everyone I talked to said there's still some craziness going on. So they sanitize all the packages as they come in. Customs does. So, we're still wasting money on that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, all right. Our tax dollars at work. <laughs> uh. um, anyway, well, we wanted to uh, go over some stuff from you with you guys. Uh, we have uh, new Spider Co releases. So exciting on the surface, isn't it? Um, yes. We have a, a Riot built production <laughs> knife by a company um, that has never had a, a Riot built production knife. Um, and we'll just uh, chit chat with some other new releases and, and new stuff on GP knives and uh, DLT, and uh, yeah. see where that goes. Okay, uh, let me share the screen now. <laughs> that is cue for me. Okay, let's start at GP knives. Oh, I'm already, I'm wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Workshop Stone. actually, they got um or whoever their parent company sold them to another company and i'm guessing that's why we're seeing different stuff from them now Mm -hmm. this thing looks pretty good the the precision it's basically just like a knockoff kme but way 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 cheaper and then yeah the price is nuts on this like if this if this is halfway decent which i think it is um i like that a lot like a no-brainer for for 50 bucks i think i'm gonna get one of those I mean, I no longer have any kind of fixed angle system, which I I feel like I should get at least one. Just uh, why am I, like like I'm really gonna be reprofiling any knives anytime soon. They, 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 there's so many of them; they never get used enough to need to be I, resharpened. So you know what I sharpen all the time are like steak knives and stuff in the kitchen. And yeah, that's the I've only thing been, I sharpen regularly. I've just I've just been using like um, what do you call it? Spiderco Sharp Maker Stones, free handed. Yeah, that's and that's just, how I got and just putting and just putting the 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 you know the burr back on them so yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, okay. Now, now it's a competition who can have the more ridiculous beverage container. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> drink a gallon me. of water every day, man. Look. Yeah, I mean, I no longer have the jug of milk. It's a it's a quart mason jar. Right. Sorry, guys. But at um, least this is clearly water. Yes, <laughs> it's not a piss jug. I, yeah, the only knives I sharpen regularly are my kitchen knives, and it's like they go on a Spyderco Ultra Fine Stone. So it's like I, I do so little sharpening that I've gotten rid of my expensive stuff. I had a work sharp. I'm not a work sharp. Well, I had a work sharp a long time ago. I had a Wicked Edge. I had the Apex. Oh my God, I've had every knife sharpening system. I had the Apex Pro. Um, I had a Hap Stone, and you know, I just have some freehand stones now. Brian uh, but uses. This is great. Yeah, Brian uses a similar system to this. That he which, built. which uh, yeah, I mean it's it's like they they all use the same concept. It's just about how much play there is, and then the Russians wildly over engineering the the TS Prof system that's like six hundred dollars. And but it is cool. It's looking. So odd. it's really cool looking, and I bet it's built like a tank. But I think this fifty dollars thing is probably good enough. That's for a really the majority as, of people. if you can secure that base down. Well, uh, I think it will be uh, that's a hit right there. Yeah. Uh, I, these sold out really quickly the last time I saw them in stock somewhere else, and I, uh, I think for good reason. I mean, this is we'll have a direct. Smart. We'll have a we'll have a direct link for this in the yeah. uh, in the. Hopefully, it's not sold out. My yeah. only guess is that um, here are the additional stones, one point five by six inches. Um, 
Mm, that might be standard-ish size. That's the only problem is tr- is is figuring out. Isn't that basically what a wicked edge stone is? Uh, more like the a- apex pro or a KME. And I think the KME stones are four inches. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this thing gets popular enough. Websites like Gridomatic will start cutting stones to fit it. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Gridomatic; they're good. But yeah, that that actually looks really good. And it's funny, you know I f- what? I, for like my uh, Camp Ten and other crazy. Uh, like outdoor knives that I have, I actually use the old school Work Sharp, the automatic one. The original one. The original. That's one. the one. The, the 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 knife tip decimator. The knife tip decimator. But let me I, tell you, it works really well. Yes, for, for big knives, garbage like that. Yeah, it doesn't. I um, bought one of those back in the day and ruined at least two to three knives. Before I was like, "What am I doing? Why am I using a non-speed adjustable belt sander to try and sharpen my?" <laughs> well, that was one of the worst ideas selling that to the general public. I think um, they still sell it. They, yeah, you they know, do. But that the Ken Onion version first... is so much better. That was. I think is mine. Mine might be a Ken Onion one. The Ken Onion. The Ken Onion one is a little bit different colors and has like a. You can get a platen for it, so that's just like a little knife grinder. That yeah. one, you can actually change the speed and the tension of the belts. Um, that one, you might not destroy your knives with, but like the original workshop, that thing just mowed through them. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> oh, I've, had, I've had pretty good luck with it because I sharpen garbage knives on it. Yeah. Machetes. It's great for machetes and axes yes. and stuff. Yes. Okay, something is wrong here because this looks really quite nice. So, I think... I th- mm, I don't know, because they were supposedly releasing like really nice German-made slip joints. This is China, but it looks pretty deep. I mean, it basically, if you can't afford uh, Miguel Pena's um, front flipper tradition style traditional, Enrique Pena. Yes, Miguel Pena is the actor, isn't he? Yep, the one in and and of watch. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. So Enrique Pena. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just said Pena knives. Um, this just looks like a cheap version of it. It doesn't look horrible. I, you know, I think this looks kind of nice. It's the addition of lock. the addition of the, the front pocket, flipper, the pocket clip, is an interesting. Uh, oh, it's it's huge. Never mind. This is well, it's huge by what I consider traditional knife standards to be huge. Which you, is it like a, a sod buster sort of situation? Yeah, three point seven five inch blade. That's not. This is not the kind of knife I want in that size. Hey Hector. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is like I get it has a lock and stuff, and it is one hand opening, so I guess it's okay that it's the size. But this is, I don't know. I always assume these knives are going to be smaller. I don't have high hopes for it, but it doesn't yeah. look. It, the actual profile is nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, ooh, <laughs> more boker. This is just a lot of new boker. Boker. <laughs> God, there's st- <laughs> Boger Plus knows how to run a design into the ground. Oh, this is like something that like T Ready um, would love, isn't that how he it's, says? How do you say his channel name? Tre- tre- Treddy? Is, is it Seven Treddy? Ready? I have Seven no idea. Seven Ready? Yeah, this is definitely this... right up his alley. It's European with some micarta on it. Yeah, I I think this is nice in terms of like making it look like the custom a little bit, but I don't know. It's a steel frame lock. Which honestly is an improvement for Boker because you do not want one of their titanium frame locks, um, unless you just want a knife that doesn't function. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean I haven't handled a Boker titanium frame lock in quite some in time. In ages, but... Boker Plus occupied so much of like the knife community's brain in like when Jeff from Tough Tough Knives was really getting big. But man, does no one care about Boker Plus anymore? I mean, you know what they did? They were one of the first. Uh, to really reach out to um, like established knife makers and say, "Hey, look! We oh wanna, yeah, absolutely! You know, we they've had build amazing collaborations and the designs and the makers that they've worked with is incredible. Yeah, and it's like yeah, I'm Rexford, Rexford, Monaro, before ZT. Yeah. Um, you know, so many people like crazy crying. Yeah, Tom they've Klein. done they've done so many. The, I just wish it was some other company that did all these amazing right. collaborations. Right. Lucas oh. Burnley, I mean, they yeah. basically... I don't want to say they put him on a, on the map, but the Quake and definitely changed his life. 100%. And that honestly wasn't a bad knife when it came out. No, so I think no never, was... It, was a, it was a big improvement mm-hmm. from most of their stuff. Uh, speaking of Luke Burnley, here we go. Here's a Boker Plus fixed blade of his. And their fixed blades are actually quite nice. I will not... Yeah. I have no problem with Boker fixed blades. It's just like when they do locks. It's 
kind of they're basically just like lion steel but german it's true <laughs> It's the true. fixed blades and the slip joints are good. Avoid things with locks. Is this a, under the Boker Plus? The Boker Plus line is yeah. not doesn't mean what we uh, it used to mean. Because um, I don't think it necessarily means now made in China. Uh, this I one's think China. It, I think it can be um, different different uh, levels now. But don't quote me on that. I'm not quite sure. Boker's <laughs> hierarchy is uh, it's a little confusing to me. Oh, that's a decent fixed blade. It looks nice. You know. I mean, Lucas Burnley knows yeah. how to how to draw a knife. Let's let's be honest with ourselves. I don't just well, even someone, make knives anymore. <laughs> someone who I'm not sure knows how to draw a knife is whatever your cursor is landing is. Yeah. What, what is, is what well, is this fixed yeah, blade? That, what are these? One. What are all of these? What are those? Well, that looks. I don't know uh, about that. Go back to the other one. That's not even <laughs> worth talking about. I just it's it's made by a French maker, so this seems perfect. Yep. Mm. They love their little scalpel type thing. It things. looks like a pen knife. Yep. What is happening here? Uh, it's not finished yet. Put it back it in. It doesn't... This is... We have we have Serge Pinchenko at home, and this is what you have at home. That's right. That's what it is. No, uh, it does not list who the maker, if it's a collaboration with a custom maker, or if it's just a blatant Let me tell you something. Serge's whole it, thing. It, it, it looks like I made it. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. But, this I, but is just, I would have a, I would, it would probably be better looking than that. This is too, too much, just uh, a, a blatant IP Pitch. sort of Pitch. theft of, yes. of Surge. Uh, these are actually really good. The Boker Plus, uh, the tech tools, their little modern slip joints. These are mm-hmm. quite good. I like um, them. My dad, it's like one of the only knives I have bought. My dad so many random like slip joints, and he never carries any of them. This was the only one he ever really used, and then he had, I think he got confiscated by the TSA because he forgot it had his in pocket or something. These are good, though. In copper. Interesting. That's not bad. I like that. Have you ever had a knife where the pocket clip screw is also the pivot screw? Because that is true of these. If you tighten the pocket clip screws too much, the knife won't open. What? Hey, man. <laughs> cheap, cheap, bad tolerances. <laughs> what you do is you just flip the flip it over to the other side yeah it's a but then but then so you see how it has these screws already in there when you flip the pocket clip to be to, to be tip up then you still have one of these affect the pivot tension oh, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's bad construction maybe they've changed it no no they haven't <laughs> yeah because i thought that was also a screw it's not it's the female end okay <laughs> i see yeah that's uh that's uh not great no Ooh, oh no Titanium frame lock from Boker. Um, who who is this designed by? Um, in house. Ooh, it's okay. Some things I did not expect to see here. A lock bar insert that is also done from the inside. I mean, the screws are not blind, <laughs> so it looks pretty terrible. It, it reminds but... me of the Liang Ma Warrior. Uh, it reminds me of the warrior, and then the flipper design reminds me of. Ooh, I do not remember. Oh God, uh, oh, I'm pulling one deep out of the. It kind of reminds me, reminds me of Greg Geckel's flipper designs. This looks like a. This looks like a, a knife that Greg Geckel would make. Quest, quest knives. Mm-hmm. I, shout out to Greg Geckel. What a good He's guy. <laughs> such a nice guy. Yes. Uh, this 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 looks a little bit like a design he would make. I don't know. This is like. Way too close to the Warrior 2... Or actually, you know what? To peep in Boker terms. Way too close to the Quaken. It is... It, I, I feel like that's really what we're, we're looking at here. Just... Are they hoping that, that lightning strikes nine times? Yeah, seriously. I mean... Wow, yeah, no, this... Who could blame hold them, on. right? This looks... This is a view. <laughs> this is a, a, a Liang Ma Warrior Warrior, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, looks ex- it looks exactly like it. Yes, this is quite similar. You know, I don't know. Um, I can't believe I still have that thing. I have it's a warrior one of the oldest th- knives. I have a warrior three. It's oh my god, Leon! Fix the names. That's yeah. a war. That's a warrior two, not ver- ver- warrior two version one. <laughs> I think that I, I have. A, I think I have a warrior three version two. Christ, I did that. I, <laughs> I it has the I shield can't. pivot. Yeah. yeah, no, you're one of the newer ones. I think it's the Warrior 2 V2. Mm. <laughs> because, that's, that's correct. That's, come on, Leon. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Leon. We got some dumb-looking beads. Yes. I. You know what? What is this? I don't know. You never see a new Leatherman 
It's a it's a new Leatherman, I guess. Yeah. Maybe well, I need to buy one eventually. We all, we, we all know the only Leatherman that you're supposed to buy is, is the wave. wave, and yeah. everything else is worse. Um. Yep. Some beads. Uh. Pir- <laughs> piranha. <laughs> I'm so- a- <laughs> okay. I've never owned a piranha, but no one has I, ever owned a piranha. I don't know. I don't know anyone who owns a piranha. I, well, I know a couple people that have DM me like, "Look at my piranha," but um, oh, they're tempting, aren't they? I mean, I like that uh, one. That so okay. So one. the thing is, I know they buy the pocket clips from, or they you like. This is a Chris Reeve pocket clip. They're they're in oh, Idaho, yeah. Piranha. Holy crap, they, yeah. I think I think they they're not they're not affiliated with Chris Reeve. They're just I think they're also in Boise, um, and so there's some crosstalk between them. And this is yeah, this is a it's a Benza pocket clip. I imagine they're quite well made. They just. They always look like this. That's the thing. Is they always have some crazy color I, handles. I and... like that though. You can get black <laughs> I, ones. I mean, come on. Yeah. No, it's just like it's just one of those things where it's like I never am imagining myself having one hundred and forty five dollars sitting around and being like, "Fair." Let me let me, let me take Fair. a shot on a piranha. Fair. That's the problem. But, I mean, I I feel like I might just because. It's Someone needs to try time. one eventually. And I think the biggest thing for me to hold out is that I can't carry it here in Pennsylvania. So <laughs> my hold my holdouts for automatic knives are usually around that. I, but this is coming from someone who lives in a state that can't carry automatic knives. It has a, a shit ton of automatic yes. knives. <laughs> and we would never recommend you break the law by no. carrying them if your local restrictions do not allow right. For that. Correct. What other ones do they have? Can we look and see? Maybe we can do some shopping for me while we're here. Um, there's just like this silver one, which is very sort of almost kind of Art Deco-ish looking when it's got like polished. A lot of silver going on here. Whoa. It's pretty cool though. This okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm on board when it's not the crazy hot pink. Uh, um, this 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 looks. Can we, can, we do, can we do like a little uh, detour real quick and just go to Piranha Knives? Piranha? On, yeah. If I knew how to spell Piranha. Um, all it's right. Pure Ranha. I've always thought. So I I wanted to try one of these because, yeah. Okay, look. Um, like, these look kind of sick, man. Yeah. This one, I believe, is Mirror Finish the Blade. Yeah. I was and looking at that earlier. Someone. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's 154 CM, and like they're not, ex- they're a little cheaper than ProTech, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting like a click or two below P- ProTech in, in quality, which is to say, still pretty damn good. <laughs> I don't know. I'm uh, just because of. Uh, I, I agree. I remember and this is me Tim Reeves saying something about them. Yes. I, I'm, I'm guessing they're going to be pretty good. Tim is always a, a good uh, uh, gauge on, on what's good, you know? So. Yeah, and I think they've been. The, you know the CRK people have known them for. A I while, don't necessarily so. like this color. Do they have this one in a different color? And how long is the blade? Three and a quarter. Uh, Three point two five inches. Hmm. The blue oh. is nice. I mean, I could do without the X's on. The, honestly, with the handle I, just clean. Yeah. Like no milling. What else? What else do they have? Um. Oh. Let me bring back. GP nice piranha. Okay. Uh. I don't really like this P two. I'm going to be honest. No, I don't like that one either. Um, but this P, the P14 is, is quite nice looking. I like uh, that with the mirror blade. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. The mirror finish is kind of really unexpected. Yo, look at that purple one. <laughs> what the, the, this, this one with like the, the purple washed handle. I mean, it's kind of wow, cool. Too. That's something that is something. So, you know, Microtech used to do stuff like this and, uh, those knives go for a pretty penny. Now the ones with that tie dye effect. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, well, now Star Wars knives make more money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, some of these are a little too fish-looking. Like, this yeah. uh, P3 genuinely well, looks like a fish. The name is Piranha. Yeah, you know, appropriate. Um, the virus. P, the P15 is kind of cool. Ooh, the P16 is also cool. Yes, I quite like that. I want to click on the P16, because I think this looks... I bet it's going to be... It's very slim, but I really like the fluting on the handle. And then there's the big old uh, Sabenza clip on there. Pop, so it's, like, up like, half so the it's like you get a pretty cool... Think about it this way. You get a pretty cool auto and a free Sabenza pocket clip. Yeah, this one's S30V. And under two ounces. Jeez, these are nice. And for $145, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Oh, I 
keep closing. Oh, we, I'm kind of shocked people are not more into these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't get it. I think is I Piranha won't. the unloved gem of like the the auto world? You know, I I'm, think it's just it's just not knives that I pay attention to. I have a couple new Protex coming. I'm very excited for. Yeah. Well, Protex getting their day in the sun now because yes, and, and because I feel funny like they were un- not because of autos. <laughs> Yeah, it's because of the Malibu. And it's funny because one of mine is not an auto and one of them is the ones that I have coming. I mean, they've all, they've always made great autos. It's just kind of funny so, that... Did you see they have OTFs as well? Yeah. I am curious about this if this is just a... Looks like just a regular OTF. I thought at first it was going to be like one of the ones that just slides with no spring. Oh, it's it's like top mounted like, a, like the Infidel from Benchmade. I like that a lot better than the Infidel. I bet this is better than the Infidel. It's also cheaper than an Infidel, but, yeah. you know, just about everything is cheaper than an Infidel. That's true. That's neat. Hey, I like it. well, well I enjoyed Piranha this little shot, detour I guess. on... Uh, maybe we'll have a link to directly to Piranha's uh, yes. section of GP Knives. Because um, now I'm... Yeah, those are pretty cool. I like them. Uh, I'm going to scroll down just to the like, the full-on lines. These these line steel jackknives, I hate to say it, I love them. They're it's great. It's got a bottle opener and a corkscrew. Like, that's exactly the attachments I want. It, that's what the Italians do. They they yeah. make they make great slip joints. Yeah, these these are pretty. I don't even need to click on them to know. They, these are M390. I have one of the line steel shufflers, which is like an M390. Uh, ja- uh, what's that popular style? Oh. God, I don't remember. Barlow, clip, yeah, Barlow. Thank you. I have I have one of the line steel Barlows in M three ninety, and it's fantastic. So, I remember when you got that actually. It sits in my backpack. I I forget I own it most of the time. It's I, a great I'm, little knife. Speaking though. of which, um, line steel. I love that guy that emailed us telling us all about how he has the knife that you want, <laughs> but not offering it for sale. No, I did send him an email back saying so. <laughs> Here's Can the I thing, buy though, this like, for Knife Nuts Dave, or what? I, d- there, I don't know what my threshold for like what I think would be a reasonable price for that would be, but it would probably be like not more than $150. $150. That's, that's yeah. for, I mean, that's what it's worth. It's not worth yeah. any, any, a penny more than that. I wouldn't want to spend any more than that. No. Um, let's see what else there is. Um... Uh... I like how Heretic Knives came out with a driver, and it is like half the price of the Microtech driver that also just got released recently. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. Yep. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. The Mini Osborne is out. That's cool. We got some <laughs> left-handed. You know, ex- <laughs> Sebenzis. <laughs> yeah, that's 45 yen at least. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, this Becker. This K-Bar Becker folder looks quite good. Let me open. I got oh, one. I got them. a lot. Oh, did you? Yeah, I posted it on Instagram. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, I like the wire clip. Um, uh, I I don't know why it took them so long to make a Becker folder. To be honest, it, and and the it's designed well, like, and it's cheap. Yeah, and it's it's like the perfect like out like yard folding knife beater. Like if you're doing work outside and you just want to have something that you don't give a fuck about, like. Like my that uh, that buck that I have, but only this could actually do some work. This looks very ergonomically sound since it just uses the, steel, the Becker handle. The steel handle. choice is odd for something that's kind of like hard use. It's it's, it's you know os eight. Um, yeah, it's easy to resharpen. It's easy to resharpen, but I, corrosion <laughs> and stuff is what I worry about most on it. Look at this! Look at the spine. Nope. Oh. Yeah, switch tabs. Very, it's the weirdest China. place. It's the weirdest place. <laughs> Why even bother? Like, I don't know. You're not they could have put it anywhere. to put that there. They could have put it anywhere. I, 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 I mean, I appreciate that they're not hiding where it's made. I agree, but you could have put it on the packaging made in China. You didn't have to put it on the spine of the blade. Did you see the 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 handles have the contouring on the sides? Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's, it looks great. It looks like it's like the same Becker. Uh, the it's palm just, swell. It's just in the other room. I should have brought it upstairs with me. It's very nice. The action is decent. Um, like, you know, it'll break in yeah. well. Like, I think this is a great... For, if you like... I mean, it's a, it's a Becker. It's like a classic design. Yeah. And... and a I take it form. over an Ontario Rat 1, which 100%. is like the same price. 
someone in the comments actually of of my Instagram post on this said this is the Brat One killer, and I yeah I I believe that the wire clip is great. That was smart. Oh, check it out, and more cash- piranhas. Yes, there's a lot of piranhas lately. Uh, let's see, and then some ultra text. Kind of hard to find something new to say about them. <laughs> they just exist. They're still the uh, benchmark, I think. Yeah, they absolutely ATFs, are. You know. But there's nothing new left under the sun to talk about. And then uh, yeah. I think this is it because we're back to the, the PDW backpack. Right, right. <laughs> and <laughs> that's it for for GP Dives. So some good ones. We'll link them. Uh, what, what's this now? This is DLT Trading. And they have a bunch of these uh, Chavez tiny ass knives, the, the TAK, which is not right. that small. Okay, so I love Ramon Chavez. He makes some very cool knives with some iconic pocket clips. This is one of the ugliest knives I have seen in a long time. It's It commits many sins to me. It's small and hideous. <laughs> it's really small. And honestly, these promotional shots, which are just it on a, on a black on a black, white background, make yeah. it, are the most flattering photos I've seen of it. Can you find a picture of it in? IRL. In the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You may have to Instagram that shit. I just, I don't think his proportions of his knives translate super well to small knives. Um, okay. Here's a really badly <laughs> Instagram filtered one. <laughs> That's probably not representative of it. Oh, Knife Joy has. Yeah. Uh, just look at the picture. It, it looks yeah. like a character on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. A little bit. Um, it's just the handle being just so squared off. <laughs> it's it's okay. I, I will commend. I will. I will commend Ramon for this. He pushes the pivot so far out that then the blade to handle ratio on his knives is just incredible. This thing has a, a two and a half or no, it's two point seven five inch blade, and it's only a three point five inch handle. So like okay. it's tiny, but right. it has a big hand, big so, blade. So remember that the blade actually starts like a, an inch and a half <laughs> after that. So it's just some metal there. So don't, yeah. don't go, it's a big twelve. don't go like, you know, putting a cart before the horse. Cause he did. <laughs> it's a yeah. big choil. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't really look like a choil. You could actually, I mean, it's hard to picture wh- so, how big this actual choil is. What difference does it but... make if you're, if we're, I love blade to handle ratio. I, I don't think this is representative of good blade to handle ratio. Because yeah, you lose a lot of cutting edge there. You lose a lot of cutting edge. What the hell is the point? Uh, I don't know. They're made by Riot, right? And they're like they're thicker than they probably. I don't know. It's it's if Ramon's aesthetic size down just, to I me. Just, it's, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's it, it probably performs well too. I just don't like the way it looks. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred twenty dollars. It's at least like I mean, it's a liner lock, but uh, yeah, for a little ugly a knife. Little bit. Here's two hundred. It, I, it's like that new meme that's going around with like I propose a trade. Yeah, you get, I get two hundred and twenty-five dollars. You get ugly little knife. Uh, I didn't know Gil Grissom from CSI had transitioned into making knives, but he, here we are. Who is the Grissom Knife and Tool? Am I that out of touch with the knife community at large? What? Who is? Who is this? I don't know who that is. What? What is this? I don't know. It looks like a knife that I drew on. Two a and a half inch once. blade, four inch handle. That is quite a bad blade handle ratio. Maybe um, it looks like a knife that was drawn on a napkin and then sent to like Wee Knives or something and said, here, make this into something that works. Okay, so this is made in China, uh, yeah. unsurprisingly. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this one a pass for 400 bucks, and it's not made by Riot. I Shocker. don't think. Wow. I'm going to say no. Maybe Grissom is not an actual person. Maybe that's. A, yeah. That's- like a uh, Kevin like a, John or yes, it's a it's a Western name generator. Oh God, situation. who designed the who designed the megalodon, the real steel megalodon? Uh, that uh, guy also had had a uh, fake Westernized yeah. name. Uh, he designed a bunch of stuff. Um, yes. I don't oh know, man, Jake, Jake was easily yes. fooled by it for a long time. He would definitely remember also who who designed this. Oh I my am. God. He Come had the knives. It. The knives used to be branded with his name. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Before yeah. Um, Carson. 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 Carson Tech. Tech. Lot. 
Tech. Carson Tech. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But there's no Carson. Just like, uh, I don't know, Gil Grissom is really making these in China. Mm-hmm. Um, it just Gil. continues to... <laughs> Gilgrim. continues to stagger me how how <laughs> the hinderer renaissance just continues yes and I every new hinderer sells out and Im- immediately uh, maybe it's maybe it's metal complex's fault uh, he i mean t- probably yeah i mean it's cool but like it was they're good knives the eclipse. they're good knives yeah the eclipse is a pretty good knife too i just you know I just didn't know people were that excited for them to come back. I mean, I guess the, the ZT-0392 did so well, and people right. wanted those so badly. Hinderer was probably smart to cash in on some of that. I'll bet this is just is just as nice as a, as a, as a ZT-0392. Now too, uh, yeah. Prior, they weren't. I had a, an original run uh, Eclipse, and I loved the actual shape of it. I thought it was a really well-designed knife. But the action was god-awful. Yeah, Rick used to have a strange philosophy about how f- the flipper was just a blade guard, and everyone was like, "Please just make it a flipper and and not a what we think is a flipper, but like you're being told it's a blade guard." Uh, yeah, and then he made the knives flip really well, and then mm-hmm. the, that was the end. Of, and then now they are inc- more popular than they have ever been. So mm-hmm. I wonder what the correlation is there. It's true. Pretty easy to guess. The triway thing was a brilliant marketing thing you also very smart you want to choose what here just have some fucking washers you dingbat <laughs> especially for knives that he made to be take, taken apart all the time anyway it makes so much sense i hate to say it i love this it's fucking sweet <laughs> i agree with you i want I this done on some other knife yeah like, i don't want it on yeah. this medford but yeah. i want a different knife with it's the so cool. I'm such a sucker for the World War II uh, bombers and fighter plane. Uh, I was waiting graphics. for I was waiting for you to say something because yep. I agree. It's that's awesome. A, that's a cool model but it's, too. Because it's will, like it's got like it. colors and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's nice. like it's perfect. It's nice. That is I, so I, cool. I actually like that knife too. But Medford, it's, uh, it's too much for me to deal with, man. I don't. It's, it's I don't not worth it. Wanted, it's I don't want to touch it. any of this stuff. Um, yeah. You know what's interesting is this one like heretic knife got posted on social media by a few different dealers and I like I can't figure out why it's really expensive and it's like just odd. I, I, I don't know. I, what... I actually like that design though. I mean, as far as what it is, I, I kind of like it. Yeah, I was just kind of surprised that it got pushed on social media. It doesn't seem like the type of thing that would get pushed on social media. I, not I, I disagree. I think it's one. Of, it photoshops well. It's good. I mean, it photoshops, it photographs well, and it's looks cool that's true and it's, it's, it's very, pretty wild it's, looking it's it's very grammable uh, yeah 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 i see that now that makes sense um <laughs> okay this may be j hoback's most egregious this is this is this is just probably a laser cut piece of steel with an edge on it for 155 dollars I, I'm not even going to say. I, I, to I me, think Jay Kovac does this just to annoy us now. For, I, I, you know, I'm not as going to go far as to say that he's a crook, but. I, I like this ad copy. Grab a couple and put them anywhere. No one, not even Jeff Bezos, has enough money that buying three of these seems like a reasonable purchase. <laughs> so just to put this in perspective, <laughs> that piranha automatic knife with a Chris Reeve pocket clip was $144. A a folding knife with a lock. Automatic. This this is a sharpened piece of flat steel. Of scrap metal. Of scrap AEBL that he had. And it's $155. And it's not not like you can use the argument made in China, because they're not. Oh no, but here's the thing. He puts Velcro on the sheath for you. Oh wow. So you can Velcro it to uh, places. This, uh, this probably was made in China. Too many people watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith in that, that gunfight they get into their house and decide they need knives everywhere. Uh, so, I mean, so that's, they need to be, cheese of Velcro. To be fair, David, that's what my house is. Literally on any surface, there's probably <laughs> there's a knife. knife. There is a knife. 
Okay, here is another. This one is inexplicable. This is $10 more, and it has a blade length of 18 inches longer <laughs> than the last one. And this is only 20 bucks. So, do me the mathematics on that one. Where's this is, one made? And what's it made is, of? The, okay, so it's AEBL again. Uh, it is same thing. It's a machete. Some machetes generally are just stamped steel with an edge. So he's just getting real thin, long piece, sheets of ABL and then putting an edge on it and selling it as a machete for $175? So I don't know. Ju- so, yeah, because obviously this was just, you know, laser cut out of, out of a, you know, a sheet of steel. And yeah. they probably, on the same sheet, in all the little sections where they are not cutting these 18-inch monstrosities, is a bunch of those little guys. So it's literally free money. This is, yeah, I don't, this is, this is, I, we'll see if people buy them. Oh, it sold out. I at, guess someone, both of them are sold out. Did you see the, the, the width of that steel? Yeah, point oh seven. I mean, it's a machete, so it's supposed to be very thin. Right. Um, I am just, uh, so, I'm curious how AEBL works as a sheath. And... That sheath probably cost about 50 cents from China. Hmm. No back? <laughs> I, I don't. I you know just, what? It, it comes down every to trans- single time. Com- he impresses me more and more. You know, I, we, I've mentioned it before. It's like, why do you think that your customers are, are stupid? Why? <laughs> Because you sell to gun people. You just don't sell to knife people. I mean, someone will buy it. It's obviously a cash grab. He's trying to pull wool over people's eyes. And companies that lack transparency are doomed in today's world. Which is shocking because at one point I thought Hoback was doomed. And then he reappeared and he's doing this stuff. (laughs) Look, okay. $175 for, for a machete that probably should cost 40 or 50 but that's beside the point. Uh, I, I, can, I can, I can, I can see it more than the uh, like. You know, he's making the scrap metal. The scrap. I mean, come on now. Oh, yeah. I don't. I. Just, uh, <laughs> I am running out of things to say. Let me go back. All right, let's move on. Um, let's see. You know what? We should go over the Spider Cone releases. Yeah. Uh, as I, said, I, don't, I don't know who this tour, tour tour company is, but yeah, that's about it. Do you I think know, I could, a lot of scales. Um, before we move on, can I take a pee break? Yeah. All right. I'll be right back. All right. Oh, look at those things. <laughs> so earlier I gave Hector a piece of marshmallow. Oh, that's... How's that going? Um, he didn't eat it, but he left it on my carpet. Or on my... I No, he put it on my couch. And uh, I proceeded to sit in it. And um, <laughs> I have marshmallow all over my ass. <laughs> I mean, you have to realize that I gave him like the littlest piece of marshmallow... And I, I realized there was some of it on my sneaker. And then it was some on my couch. I was like, oh, I must have just put my foot up like or something like that. But now I just got up and there's marshmallow all over my computer chair. <laughs> and God I went to go. I, I felt my butt and it's just covered in marshmallow. All right. <laughs> Soldier on. So I got to... <laughs> And put on new new gym shorts. Good thing there's new Spider Coast to make you feel better. Oh wait. Oh wait, not happening. If they call this a reveal, just unreveal. Put this shit back in the vault. Yeah, I don't know. You didn't need to reveal this to us. I I, I think it would just uh, no one would care if they just said, "Oh look, these are available. These, these are available if you want them." This is this makes it worse. The fact that this is a full on Spider Co reveal. Full of resiliences. That's it. <laughs> and I hate to say it, but Spider Co.'s budget knives are like the least competitive budget knives mm. in their price class now. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm like trying. These, these were good when there was no other companies making cheap knives, like, yeah. a, a long time ago. God damn, man. It's funny Just because... Just a catalog that, full of that, these. That K-Var is more compelling. Yeah. Okay, they made one in S35 VN. Like, uh, okay, I guess that's neat because it's I don't have something this big. It's $107. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of their lightweight models. It's got S35 VN. So I guess that's better than than nothing. But, like... I bet that knife cuts really good, though. I bet it does. I mean, it's a Spider Co. But, like, the entire catalog is just resiliences and then thin red line knives. Thin and red And thin and blue, blue line knives. Like, th- this is the kind of stuff that you could have just sent out to dealers. Like... <laughs> also, I'm did you, you see I'm that- yawning. It's so it's, it's really difficult to talk about. Uh, another move Spider Co made is that the like announcements of limited editions are now only going to be on the Spider Co app, so you need to have another thing clocking up your phone. It's no longer going to be on the Spider Co website. <laughs> they really just want to push people to their app. To their app, why? Yeah, what is it? What does it gain them having the app? Like uh-huh. they're just advertising their own products on it. I don't understand. Uh, th- th- their money is are they trying to become like a, a tech services company <laughs> is this the transition into services i don't know i love you spider co why you do this i mean they're the most hit or miss company yes. like the the highest highs and the lowest lows just you never know what you're gonna get with spider co is there anything we can salvage from this what's that one at the bottom uh, it's a it's a police four and K three ninety with a full serrated blade, which is like the use case for. Why this, does it look like such the spine? A, oh. Like this, the the population that like this knife is good for is like this, maybe smaller. There's like one person out there in Spider Co made this knife for them, and that person is probably just like ecstatic that this thing exists. I just. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. The, there are so many knives in Spider Co's catalog. How do they make money doing this? That, the, this is why can, the tooling costs go up like fifty percent every year. I just feel like Spider Co's biggest competition is themselves. Is themselves? They have. They've never heard of cannibalizing the market. They just will sell you eight million things that are almost interchange, interchangeable. Like, the Resilience and the Police 4, admittedly, the Police 4 has much better blade steel, but, like, K390 is such, like, an overkill blade steel for a, a knife that's supposedly for cops, like the police. Uh, like, I just don't, I don't get it. They, they have cut the baloney so thin in every segment by offering so many skews. Like, this is why the tooling costs go up every year by, like, some crazy amount is because they offer 8,000 knives. Very, I don't get it. It's very they odd. are the cheesecake factory of knives. It's true, and it doesn't. They you go cheesecake taste, factory, and they got a forty-page menu. They don't. It doesn't taste as good either. So, yeah, yeah. You, 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 there's a reason fancy restaurants have like a one-page menu, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, I don't know. I Spiderco, like obviously they make money, but like Spiderco has never seemed like a company that chases every last dime. Uh, they they do a lot of weird stuff, like the poachy and just just years and years of weird knives that we could go through. So, like, I get that they're not, they don't care about the, like, bottom dollar, like, a thousand percent is their only concern, so they make everything for everyone, but, like, goddamn. <laughs> this, here we, <laughs> a fully serrated man bug, Warncliffe. <laughs> what, are they going to sell one of these? I don't know. I mean, what's the blade length on this, and why... 1.97 inches. It's probably the least amount of serrates you can get <laughs> for you can square count the, You can count the serrates on it. Yes. <laughs> the only way to make this have less serrations is to send it to Tom Veth. He could fit one of his serrations on this. And then it just becomes like a, a hawkbill blade. It's so weird. I don't know why they do this. Like, let's just click on the Man Bug series. Okay, how many do we... We have six different SKUs here, and that's just what Knife Center has. There could be other ones. Just man. Bug. <laughs> there is something for everyone in the spider... Hector. I think Hector, he wants his marshmallow back. <laughs> <laughs> or he really hates the Man Bug. He hates the Man Bug. I love this. Like the man bug salt. What what rope could you saw through with a two inch blade? 
Like you're not gonna get through anything with this. I don't. I don't understand. It's, it's very so funny. It's kind of cool at the same time that they, these things exist. It's just, I, I just, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the business case for some of these. <laughs> The best part is, in like 10 years, we're going to be like, damn, remember when Spider-Co made all those goofy-ass knives? I wish they still did stuff like that. Yeah. Because all it's going to be is Manix 2s, PM 2s, Para 3s, yeah. and Shaman soon. <sighs> also, I feel like they have some kind of, like, obligation to keep this Japanese OEM running. <laughs> like, they've had such a long partnership with them that they just keep keep having them make them knives. Look at this thing. Oh man, I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't get it. And that's the whole reveal. There's I, nothing well, else to talk that. about. That was a Spider Co reveal, guys. The whole thing done. All right, and then there's the one last thing you want to get mad about. Okay, I can't handle all this. <sighs> this is just ending on real sour notes. All right, so. This brand is very James. <laughs> this is a brand that really, really thinks highly of themselves. And uh, another one that likes to, in my opinion, insult the intelligence of their customers. They don't tell <laughs> they don't tell you where their stuff's made. They don't they don't they think you you have no right to know. Like that's not important. You know, and and sure it doesn't matter, but the point is why are you hiding it then? You know what I mean? Uh, and they come out with an integral knife made by Riot and say, look at how innovative we are. Look at, look at the quality of this product that we, we basically copied everyone else's homework and put out something that is, you know, could be cool on the surface, but then we're going to add $250 of pure markup to the price just to say, you know, this is, this is our, our flagship right here. I, all right, let's see. Um, oh my God, one of them is sold out on their website. Maybe they only had like two of them. But if you look at the the, the website, <laughs> yes, it's very over the, oh, it used to have like a scrolling thing. I think if you go to maybe the, the main website, I mean the main page, um, instead of the shop, there's like, uh, there's like a whole scrolling thing that explains how majestic it, oh, here we go. Um, maybe. Uh, did they remove this? They, there was there was a very over the top marketing thing where you scrolled through it and it showed you all the things and the sketches of it. And like, admittedly, I think I love I love the design of this knife and I think it's great. Oh, here we go. Read the story. Um, I actually really like this thing. I just don't. I just think it's ex like over way overpriced. Uh, that it, said, it, I actually it's, it's I really like it. <laughs> it has. I don't have any problem with the. The it's made by Riyadh. It's gorgeous. Like, look at this crazy not, shit that Riyadh did here. It's not gorgeous. It's not gorgeous. Okay, the handle is cool, and you know, I think advanced. Yeah, maybe knife, not gorgeous. I think Advanced Knife Bro said it. It's like it, I like it better when it's closed because the blade itself. Is the blade just, is a little bit of a letdown. What oh, you? I don't know. I'm I I am not as harsh on this knife. I think it is definitely the, more expensive it's definitely 200 like not 250 because this is 600 i don't think in, i don't I'm think probably, we ought to sell was, an integral was, for two, i'm sorry the 250 dollars was directed towards the blade hq exclusive version oh okay so 700 hundred dollar blade hq 650 yeah uh, i don't know i think this knife at 500 dollars would be pretty four, reasonable four, i doubt riot charge 75 for for riot integral that's, i don't know that's what that's what the uh the jack was the jack and stuff and they were arguably way more complicated than this yeah that is true but that was a that was their their own company then they sold them themselves i understand I don't know. so you do a hundred dollar and but that doesn't matter i know what these knives cost to be made these you know knives I mean? just strike me as something that you'd get in, like you know, those like the the boxes, the the gear boxes that you get. If there was like some like uh, sophisticated version, like gentleman a, yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> like the James brand seems like the thing that would come in the wildly overpriced, like sophisticated you, you, you gentleman box. Put it in box. your Shinola uh, computer bag with your yeah. Shinola quartz watch. It's yeah. it's fake gentleman stuff. Like I I don't know. I just. The problem is not the knife itself; it's it's the marketing and the brand that's behind it that I have take issue with. Yeah, and the pricing um, obviously the pricing is 
bonkers. And they're going to, you know, I know two very uh, prolific knife YouTubers that are have the same issues with it that we do, but they're still going to feature it on their channel, you know, and say like, look, here's this knife that is very compelling. And then they're going to tell you that it's overpriced, but it doesn't matter because you're still advertising it for them. And people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to have it. I, I have $650 to burn. I'm going to support this shit company. You know? Yeah, I mean, you know, marketing is marketing is marketing, and I don't know. I guess it's because it's a I can't cash. Think brand. of another brand. I don't. Th- I can't think of another brand that in the knife industry that's really kind of took this angle, and that's probably why it feels like there's such a, a visceral reaction to it. Taking like the, I, I I hate to use the word hipster, but like uh, this sort of like this marketing angle where the marketing is more the focus than basically like, the like hard people specs. who dress like Eugene Kwan. Hey, Eugene has good taste in uh, yeah, right. Sweet leather goods. Nice nice red wings, man. Hey, I'm a boot enthusiast, too. Of I will not accept this slander. I mean, um, you are a hipster. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind the term when it's used correctly. It's just everyone has used it as a old, out-of-touch people using it as a catch-all term for anything, like, fancy and new. It just, just kills me. Um, this, this challenge coin is really stupid, though. I'm going to be honest. Well, come on! Like, what's the, what's the target demographic for this stupid coin? I don't know. This brand like, oh is man, yet... my analog knife. So Actually, who... no. Some things will go digital. Who designed? Lion Steel had the NFC chip. Who designed this? So, knife? Yeah, them internally, the James brand designed it. Like, I think it's like, look at this picture. That that if someone presented that to me, independent of who made it, I would be like, awesome. And then when you get the price and the I don't know. It's so just, yeah. Take the the James Brand logo off the pocket clip and just put Riot on the on the blade like where they normally put Riot. Yeah. What what what's the identity there? Like I mean, you could see Riot just building this themselves. I I wish so, they did. It would have been cheaper. So my 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 take is is that a lot of these companies don't even design the knives. They just they have a deal with the factory and say, "Hey, what do you have that we can slap our name on?" I mean, maybe they drew this like if if someone at the James brand is like doing what Brian does and writing like the doing it in CAD uh, and sending them like G code to to run to 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 make these knives, I will be shocked and I will be shocked and amazed. Myself. They can they can prove us wrong. I would. That's uh, what I love. Prove me wrong. Yeah. I also I, I like. Okay, so maybe maybe I'm just into the minimalist aesthetic. I also quite like this. The other one Don't I like this as there much. Was, there was the other one. I, there was a newer version of these slip joints that I, I liked. Everything else is yeah. I can't stand. I, I kind of it's kind of all my aesthetic. I this is the one I like the least. The chapter, the original knife. That's that tra- was like the trash. one where I was just like, go no. back to the top. There was one they released prior to this overpriced nonsense that I liked. Oh, maybe that the was Wayland? the one that. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's yeah. Click on that. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about this brand, but that's I not think a, this is that, a nice looking. That's not a bad looking knife. No, not at all. I think it's super clean. I I like it. I just uh, how much are these? It's probably a lot. I, not stories. God, when they have stories. So you know what? I get, I get what they're trying to do. I also get really, really, um, two hundred bucks. So I no, get, I'd rather have a Lion Steel. So who knows who makes this? Maybe Lion Steel. Um, the naming structure and the and the and the strong arm marketing reminds me so much of Quartermaster. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. They're a little more legit than Quartermaster, but I, I I get what you're going for. I mean, like marketing is the brand, not the knives. And that that's just you know. I could. I, I hate you to can, say it. I really worse. like most of these designs. I really like most of these designs. I just like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just go it's read. Go things. read some of their ad copy. Yeah, and then get back it's, to me. Like these are nice. Like, and they come in a bunch of different versions with Mark with my Carter. And stuff. With Carter, you get both brawn and beauty. Yeah, uh, it's it's it kind of reminds me of uh, let's see. Oh, um, Shinola. Modern, mo- yeah, Shinola. Shinola is a good uh, modern cast iron, like machined cast iron pans that are minimum one hundred fifty dollars to three hundred dollars. That that are essentially flannel, no different in performance. Yeah, cuffed boots. 
a couple cuff, of design cuff, cuff jeans huckberry you know? yeah hey i cuff my jeans uh huck, the entire website huckberry just kind of reminds me of and like yeah. this thing is the stuff on huckberry is well made it's just really expensive are we taking a detour to huckberry right now no because you need to log in with them it's, it's insane you can't yeah. just access the i love website. how they have a social media login too which just means hey give us you all should, give us all your let us track you give us all your info <laughs> all right We've gone way too long. <laughs> well, I already gave too much of a platform to this company. In fact, we should just blur out there the, the names of everything. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of effort. Yeah. Uh, all right. I don't know. Okay. I would be, I would be compelled if they were on, more honest about the, their, um, their brand and toned down on the marketing bullshit. And the price was all right. I'll be I'll be fair. One hundred and seventy five dollars less. Okay. I think five hundred dollars. I would be totally fine with this at five hundred bucks. That's right. what I'm going to say. All right. We have both been exhausted by this. Clearly. Yeah. I kind of <laughs> want to try one out just for the sake of of saying. I, I guarantee post- they're not going to send us one now. <laughs> I won't. I won't post it on uh, on on Instagram or anything. But I guess I do want to try check it out. Uh, yeah I'm annoyed it's <laughs> just right. too much bullshit man why <laughs> well let's uh let's end it before they get more uh... go buy a piranha instead yeah go buy a piranha there we go that's how we'll end it yeah well thank you guys thank you to our uh, amazing patrons as always uh, our sponsors um, our sponsors I actually had so speaking of ad copy I had some marketing bullshit I had to read but uh it's for good stuff um you guys should check out revo knives they're a subsidiary of blade runner systems um i don't have the ad copy in front of me <laughs> but uh this uh <laughs> this, really, really this, epi- this episode job. this episode is brought to brought to you by uh, companies like, like revo knives portable knives that are good to use you could uh, 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 they're gonna be cold. This is not what they paid for. It's not what they paid for. But, uh, yeah, you know, good people. Good night. Check them out. Revo Nights. All right. See y'all later. (laughs) Bye. All right, I'm going to stop recording. All right.